Hello guys, Stuart from the Unrepentant Atheist channel and got another one uh, for you today, another one of my favourites. So here we go. Uh, this is really quite a surprising one. It's only three minutes long, but uh, it's a brilliant performance by Russell. And um, he concluded this call was a prank, but I don't think so. Let me know what you think. Susan in Chicago. Hello. Hi. Hi, Susan. Hi, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Good. Um, I wanted to talk about how um, y'all bring up extraordinary claims and how they require extraordinary evidence all the time. And I just personally feel that, you know, that statement often said in the show is just a cop-out. It's really just a personal opinion, I think. And what gives y'all the right to require such things when people bring up these, uh, you know, claims? Well, that's a brilliant... Um, <clears throat> That's actually that's actually very good. I've heard this uh, I've heard this raised before, but somehow, uh, in fact, William Lane Craig has said that for these for this particular fantastic claim, we should actually lower the bar. That it's such an attractive claim that we should be lowering the bar, not raising the bar. In other words, um, it's it's an extraordinary claim, and for that reason, we need uh, unextraordinary evidence, uh, mundane, <laughs> mundane, um, quite low level evidence, but. Let's see what Russell, because this lady is this lady is saying that she thinks that we are um, effectively evading, accepting uh, poor quality evidence. She's calling it a cop out. But let's see what Russell says. Well, I'm glad you asked that question because did you know I rose from the dead one time? See, you're just doing that to to make fun and stuff like Wait. that. <laughs> that was that was brilliant. Um, you know, he's he's throwing it back at her. Um, he's putting a fantastic claim to her, and on the basis of what she said, uh, that it's a cop out for atheists to require extraordinary evidence for extraordinary claims. On that basis, really, she should accept that claim. You, you so, know, you're not actually serious. Well, why don't you believe me? Because I know that you're doing that just to try to prove a point. You know, how do you, you know you're actually? Because that's the whole reason why you said that. Well, so if I said I had dinner at a restaurant last night, would you believe that? Well, of course, that's just normal conversation, so of course it's So good. what's the difference between that and me at saying I rose from the dead? Well, that is specifically something that is, you know, defining our religion, and these other things we're saying just to bring up for an argument. We're not... Russell is actually educating somebody here, um, educating somebody to not equivocate all claims. What is the difference between a mundane claim and a fantastic claim? And I personally have this problem myself with a, with a good friend of mine who happens to be a conspiracy theorist. And he says to me, uh, Stuart, you're just dismissing, you know, you're just d dismissing all my claims. Um, and he said to me, well, you know, I said, well, I don't really dis dismiss all your claims, just the sort of fantastic ones that don't really have any evidence. And um, he said to me, well, you know, when you make claims, uh, I tend to accept them. I said, well, what sort of claims do I make that you accept? And he said, well, you know, you, you, you told me that yesterday you went and you had a steak uh, at a steakhouse. I accepted that claim. And I said to him, well, that's just a mundane, everyday claim. It's not, nothing quite, there's nothing special about that. And um, whereas your conspiracy theorists, that there's a flat Earth, that there are aliens who put human DNA, DNA on this planet, they're fantastic claims. They're not in the same ballpark. You can't equivocate them. And that re this really is, is what this call is about as well. And Russell is uh, giving this lady uh, a really beautiful, perfect education in uh, not equivocating uh, different types of claims. I'm not actually saying that this is the basis for a, you know, a large religion like well, that. Why you know? does that have to be about religion? Can't I just say that I rose from the dead? I mean, can't you just accept that at face value? Well, I'm not using that, you know, to define and, you know, represent, you know, millions of people out there. You see, she's saying that because it's a religion, and this is what Craig is saying as well, really, that religious claims should be treated differently. They, they should be given a free pass when it comes to standards of evidence that we should not require fun, um, extraordinary evidence to accept these extraordinary claims simply because they're religious claims. Of course, the problem with that is you've got to accept all uh, religious claims. Neither am I. I'm just saying I rose from the dead. 
not just a silly argument. I mean, I understand. I that agree with that you. <laughs> I'm just trying to get at why it's a silly argument. Well, I understand that that statement was originally said by Carl Sagan, but who really cares about you know them requiring extraordinary claims and evidence? So then you should believe I rose from the dead. Okay. <laughs> I terrified her with my awesome logic. Uh, apparently, I think I think you hit the nail on the head, Russell. I think you did uh, you did terrify her with with your logic, and that was a blood curdling scream. It would grace any uh, horror film, Halloween, you know, Friday the Thirteenth, any of them. It was a it was a really genuine uh, scream of horror. I think she was she was backed into a corner by Russell's um, rational logic. And she just had no answer to it. Sometimes when you when you have religious people and you do that to them, you demonstrate to them. In a sudden moment, she realized that she did not have any rational basis for her beliefs. She realized she didn't have any good reason for her beliefs. She had no answer to that. And she just literally screamed it. She just, I think she just held the phone back her mind just literally exploded and she just screamed because she didn't have any other response. Well, what do you think of that? Um, let's just quickly see what they say. <laughs> I don't know if that was a prank or not, but I'm pretty sure it was. But no, <laughs> no. Um, I, I honestly, I, I don't think that it was a prank. I think that that was a genuine response and looking at through some of the comments of people, uh, they also think it's genuine. What do you think, guys? What do you think of that call? And what do you think of that scream? What was, what did that scream mean? Do you agree with me that her mind just literally uh, ran into a dead end and she had, you know, she ran into a dead end like she was being chased by this sort of logic monster. She turned around and she literally just screamed because she had no other, she had no other response. Let me know what you think. Okay. I'll see you again soon with another clip.